And here we go. Well, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Hank and welcome to Health, Wealth and Success. And you know what we do here? We help for all of us to feel better, to be healthier, wealthier, more successful. And you are going to love today's session. It's about like, I'll just uh, use the term and you'll get all tingly and everything. But we're going to talk about real life. <laughs> but uh, even better is that we're going to uh, learn how to really just understand on how to have more of our dreams come true and through dreaming of all things. And who we have with us is Kendall Williams. And Kendall Williams is a real life sex and relationship educator. She's an abundant coach and she's an author and a mother of seven. And I think she's had all the kitties away in the different parts of the, the uh, house. And welcome, Kendall, to the show. Thank you, Hank. Thank you. It's an yes. honor to be here. <laughs> it's just I got great. kids walking closets and stuff. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. That uh, you know, I just love on. Uh, it's always a, a catcher. Like even the, um, I like to say every moment should be climatic, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But uh, it's a great way to it certainly it catches people's attention. And uh, what I like about you is uh, I'm not even saying. I, I uh, really consider you even a spiritual goddess, if you will. And, um, and you talk about becoming unavailable for that, and that is something on how to commit to not being available for the life you don't want. And of course, I teach about what you don't want and then what you do want. And so can you tell us a little about that, Kendall? Just as far as like just being available or not available for what you yeah, don't want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just that's one of the biggest lessons that I've had to learn through the course of the last forty-four years of my life is to just not be available for certain things. You know, that we get caught up in believing that no matter what subject area we're talking about, that we have to make ourselves available for failure. We have to make ourselves available for suffering. We have to make ourselves available for sickness. We have to make it available for these things. You know, I, I remember when I turned 30, everybody said, oh, my God, you're 30. It's all well from here. You're going to start taking medicines. You're going to gain 50 pounds. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. You know, I, life is over. I, like, life was over at 30. And my 30s were amazing. You know, amazing. And then I hit 40, and I heard all the same stuff again yeah. that, it's downhill. So I'm like, I'm sure that when I hit 50 and 60, that I'm like, what is this? This is us making ourselves available for it, believing that that's the way it is. Yeah. And you know, so we look out there and we see evidence because there's a lot of people that just aren't in what I refer to as soul alignment, you know, yeah. or a God or source energy, whatever term you want to use. Mm. And when we that soul alignment then our experience our life experience shows us through pain and suffering and sickness and all this kind of stuff it shows us that you know this is how it is so then we get caught up in that evidence and never think that we get to choose wow. and making yourself not available is just a decision much like anything else right it's just yeah. like i'm available to be broke I'm no longer available to not be worthy of respect, to not be worthy of love. I'm no longer available to feel like this, you know, I, it just it fits to self. And it really is just, it's, I refer to my self commandments and I have like a commandment sheet that I do with myself when I'm setting goals, although I don't really set goals, I set intentions, yeah. but um, well, when I'm setting those intentions at different places I or sometimes just randomly I'm like I've got to go back to my commandment list and here's my command you know it's kind of like just giving a computer a new command well we're giving ourselves a new command and yeah. it's just getting right with I'm no longer I yeah. or yeah. fill in the blank where you're not happy yeah. and taking the focus off of the not happy you know I'm I'm an advocate of like, as long as you're in the problem how are you can fix the problem you're never going to find the solution while you're bombarded by your pain you know and how do you step away from that by not looking at it anymore and focusing on something that brings you joy that brings you happiness mm -hmm. you know 
Yeah. And especially, you know, these days that it, uh, you were talking about, like, you know, when you hit 30, and I remember now those days that, oh, yeah, when you hit 30, and then all kinds of terrible things happen, whatever, 40. And what happens is, is we look at other people or hear other people and start believing that, and then we start creating it in our life. So I just love this idea about not being available to those things and about uh, the soul alignment. And really what we, uh, like you were saying about the pain when you're experiencing that pain, that really is you're not aligned and you're not aligned with your soul. So you're off track and then you're going to have pain and sorrow and poverty and you know, whatever those things. That's, that's God, universe, your soul saying uh, you're not in alignment. Yeah. You know, that's how I look at it. I'm like, anytime I feel anger or depression or sadness mm. or there's some suffering, I go, oh, God's basically telling me right now, I'm not aligned to my true self. Wow. So, self. Yeah, love that. And I'm taking notes here. And by the way, I recommend everybody else take notes here because it's these little things. And, you know, I'm a mental scientist. And so, when you take the notes that way, you actually internalize that information because it may sound good and you'll say, oh, that sounds good. And by tomorrow, you won't know Kendall or my name, much less, you know, those good points right. that Kendall was right. And then the self-commands, um, can you give us some examples on like, like what are self-commands? Some of my self commands are as simple as, you know, I command in happiness every day. I command in the feeling of well being in my life. Mm. It's, it's, I, it's maybe ownership. You can do like ownership. You can do permission statements. That's something that I do with a lot of clients. Instead of I am statements, it's we need to, we're looking for permission, we're looking for validation. Mm throughout our lives from other people and from life experience and we need to validate ourselves and we need to give ourselves permission to to live our best life yeah. and and when we give ourselves permission which is what those commands are a lot of my permissions are written like you know i give myself permission to you know make six hundred thousand dollars i give myself permission to take 10 trips this year to these destinations i give myself permission to create my own schedule the way i want I give myself permission to date my children because I do. I date my children. You know, I give myself permission to you know weigh this much or to whatever it is. It can be anything. But yeah. when we think about what we're doing, we're, we look to somebody else and we're like, "So I'm thinking about doing this. Mm -hmm. How do you think about it?" And as soon as if that person is on board with it and they're like, "Oh, that's a great idea. I'm so behind you. Oh my god." We're like, "Okay." But if they go, "Yeah, well, I can do it." differently we're like all right readjust let's recalibrate this and do it the way that person would do it so we're yeah. not really in who we are right there yeah. and that's like give yourself permission because spirit god is going to speak to each of us differently nobody's mm -hmm. path is identical to somebody else's we can be similar we can have similar belief structures similar ideas and desires and all that kind of stuff yeah. but at the end of the day each very unique individual's and yeah. so we have to pay attention to what's coming up inside of us and giving ourselves permission to act on it. I love that. And I just love that uh, whole concept of, of permission. And and so I, I it, it, two thoughts come up uh, to me. First of all, this idea about, um, I call it a PP, and that's a people pleaser. And, you know, don't let them be PPs anymore because uh, that PP uh, is just so good. That, um, right. that you just can't please another person because they are changing all the time and so the only way you can actually please yourself and then please other people is is uh to be that way and then affirmations that um that's why like i i help people to tap into their subconscious mind the kingdom within and like affirmations like i am wealthy well you need to have your conscious mind agree with your subconscious mind to come together and so when people say i am wealthy with their conscious mind 
the subconscious mind says, oh, shit, <laughs> like you've been telling me <laughs> I don't have enough, you know, enough money, whatever, and, you know, I don't have enough money to pay for this or, you know, whatever that be. So I just love that whole idea about permission. It just feels good. Now, can you if, it, well, if it doesn't align with your desire, then you're not going to get very far. You know, we can yeah. have all desires but that pain factor that we have where our pain body comes up mm. is because we tend to you know i much like you i work with people and teach them how to have you know their best life and how to tap yeah. into their truth to their power to yeah. become more embodied and one of the things that i'm always teaching people is that you know the desire and the belief must come together and if we say let's just take money right say, you mm -hmm. know wants more money so let's say i want to make a five hundred thousand dollars this year let's just say that i want to make a half a million dollars this year so if i want to make a half a million dollars this year but i'm making fifty thousand right now that's such a stretch for it like that's hard to believe right because i right. feel like maybe i can stretch myself to seventy five thousand or even a hundred thousand maybe right. i can believe so if i throw out that big desire of a half a million now yeah. i'm calling bull on myself in my head and with my energy so my actions, I'm just not into it. And instantaneously, I start looking for how it's not showing up. Mm -hmm. Even though I might say, no, I'm focused on my goals. I'm focused on my best. I'm focused on I'm focused on my belief structure and my desire. No, you're focused on where it's not showing up. Yeah. You're not focused on how, you're, how it is showing up, which is where's the happiness at? Where's the joy at? Where's the fun at in your life? Where's yeah. your ease at? And the more you get, where do you feel free? Because why do you want to have a million dollars? You want to feel free. You want to feel happy. You want to be able to go and enjoy your life and play, have fun, right? It's going to be fun to have a half a million dollars. Yeah. Especially yeah. Yeah. So if you're in on the fun and the joy and the play and the freedom, mm -hmm. then you're captivating the energy, the essence of what you're going for anyway. Mm -hmm. And that's how you create the financial reward of that mm -hmm. or the relationship reward of that yeah. is by acting achieving the energy prior to the manifestation yeah yeah and so so i think this really takes us to that you also talk about tapping into your turn on and and yeah. getting turned on to your life for maximum manifestation power and so can you talk a little bit more about that Turn on is one of those things that people kind of get scared of, right? Because that sounds like we're getting a bad word of sex, you know, and ooh, there's a lot of shame. You're damned if you want it and you're damned if you don't want it. <laughs> too much of it or not enough of it. And when we think turn on, we think, you know, flirty, we think arousal, we think we think passion and desire. Mm. And you know, it's just this whole thing of like, ooh, there's there's this this like we, mystery around turn on and action and shame around turn on mm -hmm. and when we get into that what turn on really truly means is what ignites your soul mm -hmm. what ignites you at that soul that heart level what does turn you on? what arouses you you know mm -hmm. like i can be outside and and be turned on by the way the sun is hitting my skin and the wind blows through the trees because it's so soothing to me that that's arousing because it softens me so I can get into a highly spiritual, just a flow space. And then I'm really embodied and breathe that in and I'm aroused and turned on. And then I get to choose what I want to do with that turned on energy, right? Yeah. So all of the best stuff that you go through all the time. One of my favorite books is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's success principles at their best at a time that our society was not ready for them. Right, right? in the 1930s. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody wanted it out there, Ford wanted it out there, everybody wanted it out there, and they were trying to get it out there, and they used Hill for that. Yeah. And in that book, it's all these success principles, and number chapter 11 is all on sexual transmutation. Right. And sexual transmutation is basically the simplified version of this process that people want to make so difficult, <laughs> is that your turn on your orgasmic energy which is nothing more than your creative energy that's another way to look at orgasmic energy your creative energy and pulling it out of wherever it might be coming up your genitals right because that's where we typically think arousal so then that brings us to our genitals and then we got a whole bunch of blockage around our genitals 
and all that. Like, oh my God, I can't experience turn. I can't experience arousal. Why am I experiencing this? Is this a kink? Is this a fetish? Is there something wrong with me? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. All right. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, I walked through some squirrels and I got turned on. Oh my God, there's something wrong with me. You know, like that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then they shut it down. And what they do is they compress it down instead of letting themselves just step into it and breathe it in and then start yeah. to you know, the sensations of their skin. We have numbed ourselves out mm -hmm. as a society. Our vagus nerve system is pretty much dormant. Mm -hmm. We have just dulled ourselves, calloused ourselves with all the stuff that's going on in the worlds that we live in. Mm -hmm. And turn on means to reactivate your whole being system. Mm -hmm. So that's the mental turn on. That's the spiritual turn on. That's the emotional turn on. And yes, that's the physical turn on, but it's not necessarily in the bedroom. It right. certainly would be showing up there. It's right. a pleasant way for it to show up, but it can show up, like I said, in the sun, you know, yeah. watching the sunset, a good cup of coffee yeah. in the morning, yeah. you know, listening to your favorite song, playing with your children can be arousing. There's nothing wrong with that. Where's that joy? Arousal, the signs are, you know, you get goosebumps, you get that chill, your yeah. skin's excited, you get flushed cheeks, a flushed face, you yeah. breathe. It either softens or speeds up. Mm. You feel butterflies, mm. you know, you might feel warmth in your body, tingly. Mm. You, you might get a pull, a draw towards something. Mm. That's all ignition and that's all turn on. And yeah. as Napoleon Hill talked about, he's like, you know, all here he did all this research of all the great who's who of all time at that point. Right. And what he found that every single one of them had a high sex drive, right. had high turn on. It didn't mean that they were having a lot of sex, but what it meant was they had learned how to transmutate that energy yeah. into creative energy, and they would actually pull from it and create, you know, literally power, like light, you know, cars, and, you know, came from somebody's sexual energy from yeah. that turn. Yeah. And then we sit here and we go, well, I'm living paycheck to paycheck, and I'm stressed out, and my kids don't are fighting, and I don't like my spouse and I feel shut down from the world and I don't like my body and blah, 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 blah. And then we talk, turn, no, like, no, and you go, well, how's your set? Oh, no, no, I don't do that. Like, yeah. Whatever. Once a month, twice a month like that. And yeah. It's quick. You just get it over with right. you know, like that. It's disconnected. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, you just bring up so many great points and, and just to reflect on some of the things that like are, uh, to understand that our mind, body, and spirit are all connected in there. So like when you say in the genital area, it, it starts building up and then we shut it down. And that's just all part of it. But you need to have all three, you know, pulling like that. And the reason why we can't talk about you know, sex or whatever and think, you know, it's bad is because yeah, we're all screwed up on it because what feels good, we were told is bad, and what's bad, then, or what's good, feels bad, like us to sacrifice or whatever. And we just got everything all goofed up. And I like looking at it as our guidance system is our feelings. And, and so when I feel good, I'm in this alignment, if you will. And when I feel bad, I'm not. And so, you know, we just have because of our beliefs that we've been given. And and, uh, or this idea about you just won't even talk about sex, you know, like how many parents, you know, talk about sex and uh, to their kids. And, uh, you know, and the fact is, they not too many. So I, I get that. And that's good. And do you have any thoughts around, I don't know, maybe how sex is tied in the uh, manifestation? <laughs> maybe it's a couple of thoughts. <laughs> Just a few thoughts, just a couple. <laughs> I'm always telling people, I love watching people's faces when I go, you know, the same shame and hang-ups that you have around your sex, you have around your money. And they're like, what? <laughs> and I was like, it's true. What do we get shamed about most? We get shamed about our sex and we get shamed about money. And both of them were told that you shouldn't want more of it, that it's evil. And at the same time, desire more of it because we really do need it. It's, it's, you know, core abundance and feel good material, right? It's creative energy. One is 
see you uh, froze. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. All right. All right. <laughs> like, Where'd it go? Um, so we're just completely to turn away from it, to deny it. Mm -hmm. And that is what, you know, we block up our sexual energy we're blocking up our creative energy we're blocking up our ability you cannot separate any aspect of your life and you know put it over in some safe little container and lock and chains it up like we do with our sex yeah and think that your life is going to flow smooth and be abundant and blissful without this component missing that would like that would be like saying all right here's your body but you get no blood and good luck on your life. Yeah. You know? right. so it's like that's not not gonna work. We need yeah. the blood to go through our veins mm. to provide us the life, and our sex is just that. Mm. So how does sex and manifestation work together? And you know, it's like, well, it's the blood. It really truly is. When we tap into our sex, when we do the deep work, sometimes painful, sometimes pleasurable, typically a combination. But when we go in and we work it from every level of our being, so we cover it from the spiritual, we do it in the mental, the emotional, and then we move into the physical body where things manifest last, mm. manifest in the physical last, mm. and then what? We have all these different ailments, which shows lockdown energy, different trauma, different blockages. When we get in and we start clearing out that stuff and move the, the blockages, what we end up having is people who – love themselves god forbid we love ourselves you know love ourselves that we start to feel better our health improves mm -hmm. our thinking improves our clarity right our focus we're in a better emotional state of being because we're we're accepting of ourselves we can't you can't not be in a good state of emotional being if you love yourself right. you certainly aren't going to be horribly hateful or vengeful towards others or you know critical even when you're in a state of love of self because you're seeing the love in everybody else too yeah. so what does that do? when we are in that state what that does is it makes us magnetic so mm -hmm. you want to magnet you want to ma manifest something you want to magnetize your soulmate you want to magnetize more abundance you want to magnetize more clients then you need to be magnetic and in order to be magnetic because we live in a world a universe of attraction right mm -hmm. and so a lot of times you know it's not it's not exertion it's attraction focused right. so you get what you are you get what you're thinking you get what you're feeling and if you're locked down in a certain area but you think oh, I'm gonna find mr. And mrs. right over here and you just keep lining up the narcissists in your world you know and you're like <laughs> oh, narcissists. we're all narcissists <laughs> Why are people all narcissists well what kind of narcissistic tendencies are you actually blocking over here yeah. and really you know, where's your fear factor? How's your sex shut down? How are you abusing yourself narcissistically? Yeah, that's drawing these people in, you know, yeah. or money. Like, the more turn on, if you're flowing and you're just turn on and you're ignited and you're happy, yeah. I'm like, my clients are full. It's heck, you know, like, I'm like, I, I have tons of beautiful, you know, awesome clients that are motivated mainly because I tell them that they're motivated, right? right? I'm like, oh, you're beautiful you're amazing you're this you're that you know like yeah. that i'm like okay, i'm gonna kick your butt but you know like let's, <laughs> let's get love on each other and let's keep some butt kicking let's do this let's do that and they feel that charge because yeah. i look in the mirror and i can tell myself that i love myself even though i know i'm not perfect i'm yeah. still critical i still right. see my crap right. but I get caught on it mm. and that's what we do with our sex we get caught in our sex, we block our channels of flow, that energy there. And when yeah. we open that up and we learn to love our sex, which means love ourselves. Mm. And that love means that we are now know that we're worth more than what we used to think. And we come right back to full circle to I'm unavailable for this kind of love. I'm un unavailable for this kind of sex. I'm unavailable for this level of abundance. Mm. You know, that kind of stuff. And it yeah. all comes right back to healing the sex so that yeah. you open up that full channel because it's our weak link as a society. Yeah, yeah, it's just beautiful. So, um, Kendall, you uh, are, uh, are a coach. And so, uh, and, and first of all, let, uh, how can people get a hold of you and uh, to uh, 
uh, to hear more and understand that. And so what's the best way to get a hold of you? Best way to get a hold of me, I have a YouTube channel. So um, I do have a YouTube channel, pretty easy to locate on there, just Kendall Williams. Um, okay. Facebook, I'm available on Facebook. You and I are linked together as well. But then if you just go to kendallwilliams.com. Oh, great. Awesome. Awesome. So that's that's easy. Kendawilliams.com. And can you uh, tell me that um, uh, that what is, um, so, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to think about what all of us are thinking right now as far as, you know, what answers we would like. But so when you coach with people, like, do you have like sexual exercises to do or is this more mental or or uh, uh, what, what uh, how does that unfold like how do you how do you how are you able to free the sexual bias if you will that, that uh, most of us uh, typically have uh, how do you go about doing that on the front side there's a lot of what's to his talk therapy. So there's a lot of mental, psychological. People have to wrap their mind around something and understand it and gather data in that department so that yep. they can lean in. There has to be relationship building because you know they need to be able to trust me and I need to be able to trust them. There's got to be that vulnerability factor there at some point that comes in that only is established with when you feel like somebody really cares about you and there's a level of trust. Yeah. So the first three, four sessions with somebody are very focused on talk therapy base and everywhere from I'll give reading content. I have a lot of online courses that I put my clients into. So home study programs for support. I teach classes around the Dallas Fort Worth area as well. Okay. Um, but so I'll put them into that stuff. And then I also do everywhere from, you know, journaling inquiry things. We sit and I will do eye gazing. I have different uh, inquiry things that I do, which very simple questions that yeah. makes somebody want to run out of the room. So, <laughs> you know, like, they're like, oh, how can that Can you give us just be, one you know, like question? This simple, <laughs> simple question of, you know, like, what do you want? Yeah. Somebody just, if you're looking in the eyes and you got them three feet away from you and you're looking them in the eyes and you're just like, what do you want? And they're like, uh, <laughs> coffee. I'm like, you can have that. What do you want? Uh, and I'm like, oh, shit, I'm not gonna, you know, she's not gonna go. She's gonna keep going on this. And I'm like, and every time I answer, it's like, you can have that. What do you want? Or I might change up to, what do you desire? Yeah. Or what do you need? Yeah. You know, these things, and it right here at the heart of somebody, and it makes them go deeper and deeper and deeper. I teach them breathing. Is I give yes, I give actual based homework for them to take home with them. Yeah. You know, every conscious masturbation homework, which has less to do with the masturbation piece than it does the consciousness. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because it's all body and so you uh you froze. <laughs> Let's see. Let's get you back here. I think you. So I teach. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're freezing up on us. I think right when you said the word masturbation, <laughs> it froze up. <laughs> and um, so I will. Uh, I'm going to take it from here Kendall that you're still frozen I got you frozen but uh, so for everybody to uh, as well oh, so. you're just about there you were frozen and are you unfrozen now let me see are you there oh yeah okay there you go there you go so we didn't hear any of that in the last I don't know 20 seconds but I was saying that right when you said the word masturbation, it started to freeze. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. I, I think Facebook, Facebook locked us up. <laughs> Facebook police came. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't say any bad words, I don't think. Well, actually, I think. I'm like really clean. Like, I don't know 
Bulls are here. Like, oh. <laughs> oh, that's just great. Hey, is there any, um, like, can you provide us a um, anything special, like, for, for um, our audiences? I know you have your audience there. Can you provide something, like, um, I don't know, you know, some discounted thing or, you know, a free session or whatever? Do you Absolutely. Have if, they mention, if they mention that they got, you know, they want to come in, local people for sure, or people who, you know, are looking at coaching, because I know that you are a big audience for the place, like I do. Yeah. So if you mention that you came on the show, then I will do a free consultation. So that's $150 value. Awesome. So, awesome. That's great. Yes, well, and you. Dr. Hank in the application. All and right. There you go. <laughs> so under the referral, if you put Dr. Hank in the referral box, then it's free. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And and just to be clear for everybody that um, that I don't actually do any coaching at all anymore, that I just uh, kind of give away everything. And that's why, you know, Kendall is the one to go to if you want some really great coaching and to really get to the root here because it, it really is this mind, body, and spirit together. And when we're blocking and shutting down our body, if you will, and that sex because of our old beliefs and the way society is and everything that you know you want to think about hey if I could untap that and release that that I can then uh, tap into all the abundance that this beautiful world has you know so that's spectacular the last question that I have for you Kendall before we leave here is um, you have and I just love this too and it's daydream your success and can you tell us a little about how, how do you get success just through daydreams? <laughs> you know, this is one of those things that like when you're it, daydreaming is playful, it's fun, it feels good right? to just daydreaming, to fantasize. And when we get into that space, and I, I call it, it's like if you were thinking back to some of the best things of your life that you've experienced so far, that trip, you know, or a first kiss or a look or the birth of a child or what have you, you have memories. We daydream about the past all the time. We nightmare about our reality and our future all the time. So this is just flipping the script from the nightmare of worry and fear and scarcity to little segment dreams of really going deep and just visualizing, you know, these little moments. And you can pull from the good things of your past and kind of catapult it out in front of you. So if it's like a trip, because you felt really good on this trip, well then envision some of the things from that trip again and get yourself in that space, but then see yourself where you're at now, like what you look like now or the person that you're with now with you and experience. And then when you get into that space, that's where you get into that magnetic energy. That's where the magic's at. Mm -hmm. like things within a couple hours just daydreaming. Yeah. And it's crazy, but I'm telling you, I used to, you know, I raised five kids on $17,000 a year. I don't know how I did it way back in the day. And then, you know, now multi six figures. And I look back and I go, wow, I was nightmare in there and I'm daydreaming here. And I work at <laughs> and I have more freedom and I'm doing what I love and I'm speaking my truth. And I'm turned on the life and I'm traveling and I'm enjoying my life when it's all based on full of daydreams. It's speaking it into reality. So we speak it into reality by daydreaming it. Because often here's the thing, like when we speak it, if I tell somebody my goals, yeah. like let's say I have a, a, a friend and yeah, they're really supportive, but I, and so I tell them my goals, but they're like, ah, oh, they know my past, right? Mm -hmm. Or my spouse. Right. Like, yeah, remember last year, remember last year, da, 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 so they apply doubt in there for us. And doubt, it works against us in this category, right? So right. they're critiquing, right. they're criticism. So it's, sometimes it's way better to hold a desire until we get it actually birthed a little bit, until we get more momentum right. behind it. So that's what the daydream process is about, is to build that momentum, that energy in, for the creation right. and really into alignment with your soul with with the universe so that it can just pop out there 
And then, yeah, you have these little magic moments where, you know, all of a sudden the car that you've been wanting that you couldn't find, it just somebody goes, hey, I got a friend selling this red, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or, you know, the house that you wanted to come available, well, there it is. Or the idea, client, the money, whatever it is, you can get it into. It's not hard to manifest things when you're in alignment to them with your energy because it's just a frequency. Man, I just love that. And nothing like magnetic energy. And so KendallWilliams.com and you can get Kendall Williams on uh, get into her on Facebook and uh, just an amazing person uh, again, a, a angelic manifester and, and uh, a goddess, if you will. I'm really helping all of us to uh, tap into that magnetic energy. And so Kendall, just, uh, we have a couple minutes left, but any last thoughts or anything you'd like to leave us with? Really that we're just all worth it. We're, you know, just accepting our worthiness. I, I'm one article that's probably going to come out this week is um, thrown to get some, you know, and it's like we need to all just get a thrown to going for ourselves because if we don't, who will? You know, this world is not going to ever look at us and go, oh my gosh, I really think that you're the lucky one. We think we have to think we're the lucky one. We have to that we have the worthiness we have to believe that we have you know you hear this talk of like you're such a queen you're such a king you're a goddess you're this you know like all this co-creation everything but we just give it lip service and it's got to go deeper than that it's got to be belief and we got to have to desire and the big catch is is that you can want it all day long if you're not willing to realize that the world that you're living in right now has to change your thoughts your feelings and the world that you're in has to change for you to have what you claim you want yeah then you're not in alignment to it you're not ready for it yet so it's about getting ready to be ready for it in that process yeah. and getting in alignment because you have to be ready to basically kiss your life that you have goodbye and the simple truth is that like you're not going to if you think that you're going to get what you want remaining the same, well, that's the definition of insanity. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. Well, there you go, folks. Words of wisdom, Kendall Williams, that just a, uh, just magnificent. And again, you know, that she, she has her uh, as a real life sex and relationship educator, but now you understand where that sex comes in and what you're just doing is tapping in to your soul your divinity that we all are We're all made in the image and likeness of of uh, god our source our inner being the universe whatever word you want to be and here's how to do it with kendall williams so kendall thank you so much for being on our thank show you. today and thank you for having yeah you bet and uh and then take advantage of uh kendall uh, is offering a free consultation a free hour 150 dollar value just mention Dr. Hank and you'll get that free consultation. And I guarantee you, it'll be worth your time. Uh, and so with that, I wish all of you the best. Know that you have the power to be healthy and happy no matter what this world is doing. And Kendall can help you get there even a little bit quicker. And so this is Dr. Hank wishing you all the best. Love you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> what a fun time. Thank <laughs> you.